Hey, Craig. That is a beautiful symbol. It is. Got did a you, smoking deal on it. Did you? Where'd you get it? Oh, at uh, a local place that I like to visit. How much did you pay for that symbol? Do I have to tell you? Well, I want to know. I've been looking for that exact same symbol. The cheapest price I could find was like 200 and, or 350 bucks, I think it was. Got it for 250. 250? Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yes, it is. How could you possibly get a deal like that on a symbol like that? Well, I just picked up some uh, tools and tricks of the trade over some time with help from fellas like you. I see, I see. So what you're saying is by using some insider information and doing a little bit of research, you can always get a good deal on gear. Is that what you're saying? You better believe it. Today on the drum department, we are gonna make sure you stop paying too much for your gear. Join us because the drum department starts right now. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Drum Department. Of course, I'm here, Ky Kyle K. Rett. Man, you know, this is live. I should be better at this mm -hmm. by now. You'd think this is like episode 30. Uh, please welcome in the hot seat we got today, we got our special guest. We have Craig Toots Tutant. Tutant. Tutant, pardon me. It's all right. And we have Tyson Not Toots. Not Toots. Finley. <laughs> well, sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're, we're going to talk all about how to get the best value for your money, how to stop paying too much for your gear. I know that sounds maybe a little bit crazy. Uh, the reason it's the three of us is because between the three of us, we have over 60 years of retail music instrument slogging experience. Probably not including our time spent uh, as kids shopping through the old uh, buy and sell or no, whatever. No, that adds up on top of it oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> No Actually, before we get into it, Craig, uh, let's talk a little bit about what your background is. So you are currently, we will call you Mapex Man, perhaps? Mapex Rep for Canada. Mapex Rep for Canada. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you got your retail experience uh, slogging away uh, in a music store out in Ontario? Yep. A couple yeah. different, uh, three different Long & McQuaid locations over the years. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a common thread here. All three of us are ex Long and McQuaid employees. Yes. Uh, shout out to Long and McQuaid. We love you guys. This is not a, a bashing of that. So this is not going to be the Nam episode for Long and McQuaid. <laughs> no. Let's start with that. I, I won't give you any juice quite, <laughs> quite like that. That's right. Only only bouquets for our friends at Long and McQuaid. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, Tyson, also uh, a veteran. You've worked for many different. I worked uh, in a private drum shop called Island Drum on Vancouver Island for about six years, and I worked for Tomley Music, and I worked for Long and McQuaid. And I was that kid in the music store just spending eight hours a day when I had time to hang out mm. doing that too. I was selling drums before I was selling drums, so. <laughs> Me too. How about you? Yeah, pretty much. Like just frequenting the local stores, always in and out of there, um, hooking up with uh, my guy, you know. Right. We'll talk about that. Yeah. I, well, talk about hooking up with your guy. But, uh, <laughs> um, As we do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a lot of like, a lot of drummers out there that just are, we love gear, we love learning more about gear. Uh, and then when it comes to buying gear, it can be frustrating because you can look online and see all these really cool things and you don't know where to get it or it's hard to find or it's not in stock or you feel like, gee, that's, that seems like a really premium price for that particular thing. Um, there's lots of ways to get better value out there. Um, and when I know when I was a kid, I, I started working in a music store when I was 16. I worked for a, a very small tiny music store called North Bluff Music. Shout out to Barry Baldwin if you're out there anywhere. My first boss in a music store. Uh, then I worked for a company called Ward Music, which was at the time Canada's longest running music store. Uh, very old school kind of vibe. And then worked for Long McQuaid for a long time. But yeah, I was the guy at 16 and 15 calling the store saying, do you have this symbol in stock? <laughs> cool. You know, uh, just all about Cool stuff, right? Uh, and today's episode, this is an open forum. I want to get stuff, I want to get feedback from those of you on YouTube, those of you in the members area. If you have any questions about how to get great value on gear, we're going to try and answer them. In fact, I, we're going to try this. I don't know when we're going to do it yet, but sometime during this episode, I want to try and maybe appraise a used value live. We'll, we'll see if we can get someone to send us a link, something maybe they're looking at buying. We'll see if we can actually see if we can give them some advice on that. What do you guys awesome. think? I love that. Cool. Yeah. So we want to en engage everybody in the conversation because that's what we do here at the drum department. We put different things to the test. We do what drummers do. We hang out. We talk about drums. Okay. So with all that being said, how do folks normally shop for gear these days, number one? Well, I think the internet has taken a lot of the guesswork out of how to find things. You can virtually find anything you want on the internet. But uh, that's great. 
but it doesn't necessarily get you the gear, does it? Um, for you guys, do you shop online for gear? Do you, what do you use? What's your, what's your number one go-to when you're trying to discover more about a piece of gear or get something new? What do you do, Craig? To discover information about it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, like obviously hit the hit the net, check out the respective websites of the brands that you may be interested in. Yep. And uh, have a peekaboo at their lines, figure out the hierarchy of price points. Um, although you won't get that on the brand website, I guess that's essentially where you start yep. looking into uh, the stores. And again, hopefully you have a, a representative at a local store that you trust and can talk to about that stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, obviously going to websites and checking out the products and then you uh, then you start looking into the pricing of it all. And of course that can be a little shocking at times. Sure. <laughs> I really miss the old days with paper catalogs. <laughs> I was a kid that went into music stores and like I saw the drums, great, they're there, and but I wanted to know what I could everything about a particular drum. I, you know, I see a master series, per old master series kit, but then I'd take the master series catalog off the thing and go home. It comes in all those colors. Oh yeah. And like oh, yeah. I think that's what pushed me in and through retail, actually. You make a great point on that because if you've got that catalog at home, you might fixate towards just that. I'm going to get a master's kit. Yeah. With it being on the internet, which is I was going to say, well, bro, it's on the internet. You can go it do is. that. Yeah. But Some of then you're like... Some of having it in your hand. Are like it's like choice paralysis. It's looking at it on yeah. the screen. Yeah. yeah. The, all of those internet pages are not... One's not necessarily going to stick out more than the others. Yeah. Right. So you're not going to be like, oh, that master's kit I've always wanted. Or maybe like in the old catalogs, it'd be a really rad picture of like a 13-piece kit. You're like... Totally. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like in Wayne's World. If you've seen the movie yeah. Wayne's oh, World. Yeah. Oh, yes. One day... She will, will be, be mine. mine. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so that is true. That is somewhat changed for sure. Yeah. But I will say this. When you're shopping for gear, and you said it already, let's talk about getting your go-to person. Yeah. Because I don't care where you live on the planet. This is really valuable information. Um, drum gear is unfortunately not an essential thing. We think it is, and it, it is for us. But it's not like food or water or air. It's close. But <laughs> the point I'm making here is, if you walk into your grocery store, you probably don't have someone that's your shake and bake person. Right. Or your bread person. <laughs> so right. Right? But when you go to your local music store, even call your local music store, or even a large chain music store, you might have that connection with the person. Yeah. That ideally. is probably the single strongest way to get the best deals, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, if you are a shopper online, if you say deal with a company like Sweetwater, they're actually built for this, mm -hmm. right? You have a go-to person. This is your sales rep, you will speak to that person. They give you their extension, you connect to that person. Have you guys ever shopped on Sweetwater? I have not. I have not. It's a great experience, I will say. And I poo-pooed it for many, many years. I was thinking, this can't be. I worked mm -hmm. in retail forever, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, 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 right? No, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, but doesn't matter if it's a large chain store, if it's a mom and pop shop, find somebody that you connect with at it, that store. And it, they don't necessarily have to be the drum person, right? Yeah. Because if you trust the person you're dealing with, they'll help you get a great they'll deal. They'll help you. Right? Yeah. Is that yeah, fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. But if you can find a great drum person, uh, ideally, become friends with them oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Ask them questions, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, and another way to get that connection. Maybe you don't have anyone else in your neighborhood that uh, plays drums, but maybe you have a friend that plays guitar or bass. Ask them where they go, mm -hmm. right? You say, oh, you know what? Uh, X such and such music store. I, I love going there. Oh, I don't think they have a very, very big drum department. Well, that might be true, but the, the, the salesperson there, Charlie, Charlie knows everything and he's such a great guy to work with. I, I would suggest maybe at least having that conversation with them. So don't be necessarily afraid to go somewhere that doesn't have everything in stock. The internet also benefits you that way as a small shop because they can bring in anything usually. A lot of times, a lot of options are out there for you. Um, and how do we feel about going to a store versus shopping online? This is an important question. You know, we're talking about finding your guy. Find, go to, find your guy at the shop, like the Durham guy. I think that's what scared me away from retail. Or is the fact that it's all going to the internet and that you don't have that personal connection mm -hmm. thing. So I honestly, about going to the internet for me, it's I still I'm I'm just learning to shop on Amazon. So like <laughs> for all the rest of the things, but I I I still like going to the store and seeing the guy. There is a nice thing about being able to go and 
try things and touch them and yeah, play absolutely. them. Absolutely, absolutely. Drum gear is, is pretty personal, right? You have to know how it sounds, how it feels. Mm -hmm. uh, though you can order a lot of it. Obviously, you can order anything you want online, but it doesn't have that same sort of, it doesn't have that same, it's almost romantic, the relationship. Well, just, just literally seeing these things in person. Yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah, you're exactly right. Under the lights, uh, seeing several different kits, you're know, like, yeah. I think part of it ends up being that I want to know that I'm going to look cool behind this thing. Absolutely. Yeah, there is something yeah. to be said for that. No doubt. Uh, so yeah, another key tip here. So let's go over a couple of these things. Number one, try and find someone to talk to mm -hmm. and establish a relationship with them. Let them uh, know what you like. That's right. And if you don't know what that is, Tell them that. Ask them. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to start playing the drums. I know nothing about the drums. Can you help me? And if you feel like you're being talked down to, or they're being condescending to you, or they don't even have time for you, move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, find, find someone guy. else mm -hmm. that will. You almost want to imagine like you're you're holding a pile of money in your hands, and you're saying, "Who here wants to earn this?" Yeah. Right. Yeah. Legit. Really important, and that can be on online for sure. Like I say, uh, Sweetwater, very large company. I've been always very impressed with the customer service, considering that I've never met any of them. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and the reason that trust is so important is because you can then ask those questions. Hey, I want to get a better deal on this symbol. Yeah, can I do that? And they will tell you the truth. Oh, actually, that one. That's such a popular symbol. It's probably never going to go on sale. Oh, well, actually, I have a version of that symbol that's slightly different that they discontinued last week. I can give you $100 off. How about that? Yeah. Right? Um, okay, so ways to get the most for your money. This is one of my favorites. Uh, do your research, number one, because a lot of times, like you were saying, if you've got a Pearl Masters catalog, that's the thing you have to have. It's only that. This or bust, right? Yeah. But maybe you just want a really nice drum set. Maybe it doesn't have to be that one. So maybe you walk into a store and you see a Yamaha drum set. And I think that's maybe the benefit of the internet now is that it's so easy to get that picture of all of the different drum kits in front of you so much. As back in the day with cat paper catalogs, you, you would, you would fixate on sure. the one catalog you got that week. Yeah, or, or even like like what Drum Center reports with another great independent drum shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, or they do amazing video content oh, yeah. on drum sets. Like, yeah. if I had to buy a kit today, I'd watch all their stuff because yeah, they really do great. Pretty good chance you can check some stuff out on their site. Oh yeah, and you and can really their, their you can tell channel. they care and they and oh, yeah. you, you feel like you could trust them. Knowledgeable yeah. guys, yeah. no doubt about it. But but yeah, having that. The more options you can have available to you when you go in to buy something, the better chance you're going to get a better deal. Because mm -hmm. if you went into a music store and you wanted to order your favorite Pearl kit, let's say, um, and they said, well, that'll be six months and the pricing just went up. It's going to be this much. These are the new colors. You're like, oh, cool. If you want to do that, great. You're going to get exactly what you wanted. You're probably not going to get a very good deal on it. Yeah. But if the same experience, you walk into that same store and you said, you know, this is a kit I really want. And the person at the counter says, this is a great drum set. You, that you can certainly do that. But would you be interested in something else? And you might say, well, maybe. What do you got? Well, let me show you this kit I have over here. Now, this might be a drum set they've had on the floor for two years. Mm -hmm. And it might be time to move that stock. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you might say, hey, you know what? This kit's actually more expensive than the kit you were looking at. I can put this in your car today, and it's going to save you $1,000. So then you have to decide, well, which one do I want? Do I really have to have the one that I decide? That I'm fixated my, my, on there? I've been spending three years planning and lusting over? Yeah. Or maybe this kit. Which is fine. Right, of course. Like, yeah, it, absolutely. But being flexible with that, boy, does that make a big difference in your options. Um, I always found that if I had something on the floor it and it was similar, it often trumped that weight. Mm -hmm. And people don't like waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Right. The drum market, and this is something that's really important to talk about right now. If you have to special order something in the drum world, it's going to take three months minimum, six months probably, probably, probably nine months. Yeah. And you're going to say, that's insane. I would never wait that amount of time. You guys are all going to go out of business with that. Well, the problem is that's just the way she goes. The drum community, the drum world, and the drum business is actually quite small in the grand scheme of the things that come from where the things are made. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And if you special order a drum kit, that's the other thing. Let's say you want to special order that drum kit. Mm -hmm. And guy says, you know what? I got great news. Most of it's in stock in their warehouse. Oh, cool. So most of it, yeah. So like two of the toms and the bass drum. I can get that for you in a couple of days. You're like, great. Oh, wait, what, what about the rest of it? Yeah, what about the second Well, that'll be nine months. Yeah. So wait, can I play? With, well, there's not quite enough here to make a full drum set. So right. then you're waiting. Mm -hmm. Again, 
Maybe what's on the floor trumps that. Another really key thing, color choice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Big one. Oh, yeah. I was going to um, dive into that, but yeah, absolutely that. So if if you're dead set on a, on a particular shade of black in this particular drum set, you have to have that one, you might be waiting a while. But if I walk in and Craig says, I've got this uh, pretty cool lime green version of that drum set. <laughs> in fact, I've got four of them. You want to work a deal out? Sure. You know? But you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. But my goodness, um, playing the drums, you want to buy what's, what's going to inspire you, but... Having those options open to you can can actually bring you some cool variety and spice to your ideas because maybe there's something that there's on the floor that's going to do a better job for you. You just don't know it. Yeah. Right? Trust oh, that sales I would almost guarantee there is. Ah. All right. Let's let's quickly have a, 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 a pass around on this as maybe one of the more interesting stories on how you maybe helped someone get a great deal. Uh, Tyson, you got one you want to launch off there? Well, I re- I running on the idea of what's on the floor for me is I would say don't be that guy. No, what's on the floor is great, but don't be the guy that has to special order and sit and wait and has to have that thing. And complain because it's and taking too long. And complain because it's taking too long. Well, the don't be that guy is exactly so, that. But share us a story of a, of, of a situation where maybe... Uh you were able to talk someone into a great deal on something you had on the floor. I, at Island Drum in Nanaimo, shout out to Michael Wright if he's watching. <laughs> he's just about to move back to England, huh. which, oh. is, which is pretty, pretty sad, but I'm going to miss him. Uh, there was an AOT kit. It came in used. Mm-hmm. And a customer came in and really, really wanted an AOT kit. Sure. But it was the wrong color, and he decided, no, I'm going to special order the, the right color and put down a deposit on it on the special order. Two days later, went, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do the special order. Let's just take what's on the floor. And we were able to, you know, for what his deposit on the special order was, let him walk out the door with the Beautiful, mm. and quite honestly, it was two different shades of blue. One was in a <laughs> one was in a very light, almost denim blue, it and he really yeah. wanted a very dark navy blue. Yeah. Right. And he couldn't do the d- d- denim blue. Turn and, the lights down. You know that <laughs> that was kind of it. You know, uh, I, I I can't say names, but uh, yeah, I that story sticks with me. That you know, he really wanted the dark dark blue. He was willing to pay. Almost three times the price for oh, the yeah. brand new one versus the the kit that was two and a half years old in perfect condition, mm-hmm. used sitting on the floor. Mm-hmm. But he finally came around two, three days later. Now there was a little trouble with the manufacturing company. I've already said Aot, but you know we put a deposit in on those drums. But now we need to cancel that. Oh sure, yeah. But uh, but that's that's part of your gig. Right? That's, that's part that's of making the gig sure that like, you're looking after your customers' yeah, needs. Yeah, you know. I've got two quick ones I want to share. I had a beautiful Tama uh, Superstar kit from the 80s traded in. Those were virtually the same as a recording custom. Yeah. They just didn't have the same cachet. The kit was beautiful, sounded great, had really nice hardware, nice cymbals. Kind of from that era, though, probably like late, uh, mid to late 80s, I think it was. I had a great deal on it. I think we're selling it with like Zildjian A's for like $1,000, which is a steal. Family walks in looking for a kit for their kid for their, their first drum set, and they want to spend kind of around $1,500, and they're looking at a stage custom, and I think maybe a Mapex Armory. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, which one of these kits would you buy? And I think I had all three on the floor. And I said, oh, no question, I'd buy the Tama kit. I wouldn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, why? It's all beat up. It's all. I said, yeah, but it's, it's, she's a beaut. <laughs> I said, it just sounds great. It's as good as it punches way above its weight for what it, what it is, and it's you not marked it at $3,000 because... Yeah. It's just less less desirable because it didn't have the same cachet. Right. Still, just as nice a drum. And of course, the 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 son was for the son. He had to be talked into not being brand new. Right. But then he played it, yeah. and he was just like, "This sounds better than my teacher's drum kit." I said, "Great." Nice. And the parents are like, "And we're gonna save six hundred dollars?" Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How fast can we put this in our car? And the other side of that story, I had a family walk in and they wanted to buy a drum set for their house. And they had them set in their mind that it had to match their piano. So I'm assuming they have a black piano. No. They had a very specific color red. 
and they spent three times what they came in to spend on a drum set because color was more important than the drum set. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great, you know what? You can choose your criteria. It doesn't make no difference to me. Sure. Um, I have a, a great drum set that would have worked great, but if it doesn't match color and that's important, great. No problem. Craig, you got, I bet you got a couple of doozies. Oh yeah, I mean, just generally I found um, knowing knowing my customer base, so that was always a, a cool thing. Something would come in and I would call a regular who, who I knew what, that they were into that. And I've, I've said for a long time too, it's it's not nearly as much the gear as the service. So right. yeah, like knowing knowing your clientele, same thing with the customers knowing having their 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 person at the store that they can rely on. But yeah, that's that's a big thing is basically something will come in and knowing I know who's going to going to love this, you know, do 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 do. Hey, come on down, yep. you know. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of that and that and again like that's serving your clientele. Um so that's a big one. Again, I mean a deal's a deal and uh, but knowing who is going to be, be best suited for that that piece of gear uh, comes in handy. That's a great segue to this drum set. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a story about this drum set. So this beautiful Orange County drums and percussion drum set, uh, if you're not familiar with that brand, this was a legendary product in the late 90s, early 2000s. This is not one of the, what they call, Guitar Center era versions. Mm. This is the real deal made in the factory at Orange County, OCDP. Uh, at that point, your artist roster would have had the who's who of the biggest drummers at that point. You got John Otto from Limp Bizkit. You've got Travis Barker from Blink-182. Adrian Young from No Doubt. Adrian Young. Chad no Sexton Doubt. from 311. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. If you were going to go to Lollapalooza, you were going to see lots of these. Yeah. So this kit wandered into the location I was managing. I didn't even do the deal. The drum person I had working at the time saw it and is literally too young to have known who this was. What it was. This is very yeah. much a Travis Barker style drum sure. set, very yeah. clearly. 22 inch long bass drum, the offset lugs, the white hardware, the acrylic, oh, yeah. the snare drum that's thicker. It's like thicker than my glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so he big offered the guy. hole on the side. Yeah. The vented yeah. snare drum. Yeah. The, the kit knew was $8,000. Mm -hmm. And the guy came in, he's like, I, I have to sell this, I'm moving. And the problem with a kit like this is, it's really unique. That's a great thing and a bad thing. Yeah. Because someone else wants us, wants it really bad, but I gotta find that person and yeah. I hope they live in my local area. Yeah. So we offered them a very low amount of money. Uh, put it this way, we were able to sell the kit for $1,000 and make money. Right. Because we weren't sure how we get out of it. So I, I literally posted a picture of it just stacked up and five minutes later, Dave Atkinson, yeah. here at Drum Drumio Dave, messages me because he's a huge fan of, he always wanted an Orange County kid, but he couldn't afford it. Yeah. And so he's like, I don't even care. I'll take it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't ask a question about it. He just saw the picture. He's like, ah, it's Orange County. I have to Blue have it. Blue and white. Go. Ah. So he, he bought it. I can tell you, though, had Dave not been there, uh, it might still be at that store. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's that's an interesting point, too. Uh, when you custom order things like that, you, if you're going to get something custom made for yourself, you sure better know what you want and better be prepared that you're going to love it forever. Because it's yours. Yeah. Someone else may not agree with your choices. And custom shop that way, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like $8,000. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so another great tip. This is one of my favorites. I used to always say one of my least favorite kinds of customers is a patient customer. Right? There's a joke yeah, in there. Fair. No, that's fair. But yeah. it's because my job is to sell stuff. And if I got a guy on the hook for something or a gal on the hook for something, ah, I don't need it right now. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Maybe I'll come back in a month. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. So I know there's intent there, but they're patient. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see if they can outweigh me. Right? Right? One of the best ways to get a deal yeah, is, yeah. To wait, is to outweigh something. You're taking a chance that you may not get that piece. Someone might walk in and pay full price. Totally possible. But let's say you have a regular store you attend, and you notice there's a piece of gear there that you really want, but it's been there for a while. And it's there for another while. And then another while. Yeah. I would strongly suggest you find out when that store's year end is, whenever their inventory is, or the end of a month, and say, I'm going to take that home today, but you have to make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. I will bet you money they will do it. Yeah. Oh, that's happened a number of times. Right. Yeah, Retail space is valuable. Yeah. It's, it's real estate. Yeah. Help me make it more valuable by let me put something else there mm -hmm. that's going to sell. Um, so patience is actually a great virtue if you want to get a great deal on something. And the other thing too is being flexible. We're talking about colors, timeframes. Um, 
drums get discontinued all the time, which is interesting because last I checked, they're all pretty much round cylinders with heads on them. <laughs> right. Right. So color choices change, mount systems change, bearing edge styles change, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're usually pretty minor adjustments. And you can often get a great deal if a company's about to discontinue something or has just recently announced a discontinuation or announced a new product. You say, hey, I see that uh, Pearl's putting on another drum kit. Uh, that seems awfully like it's going to take over that spot. And you're like, yep, it is. So and I got old stock on this. If you're interested, we can do that. Um, so that's a big one too. We haven't even scratched the surface on used gear. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, an important thing when it comes to drum gear is... That's fine for acoustic drums. Buy old, no problem. These are still gonna be cymbals for a long time. But electronic drums, it's like buying a used computer, right? If you buy a used drum set, like used electronic kit, you probably don't want something that's more than two generations old. Mm -hmm. Anything before that doesn't really hold its value, may not still function very well, and probably doesn't have the features you're hoping it does. Just the technology keeps changing. You sure. wouldn't buy an old, you know, iPhone 2 these days, I don't think. Right. Unless you got a real good deal on it. I don't even know what function. I was just going to say that, like, if the price is good, not so bad. But right. generally, uh, you, you don't want to go with anything too old in the electric uh, world. And electronic drums will always tell you the truth as to what's happened to them before you got to them. <laughs> <laughs> look, at the, look, at the, look at the heads, look Absolutely. at the pads. Oh yeah. And if they look like they've been hit real hard and a lot, yeah. that's probably they, true. Yeah, probably Absolutely. have, yeah. And actually, that's actually another point I have here to make. If you're looking outside the realm of buying at a retail location, which many, many of us do, shopping on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, whatever your local, uh, new and used situation is, you, if you don't know exactly everything about what you're trying to buy, it can be difficult. It's terrifying, actually. Yeah. If you're trying to buy a drum set for your, your family and you don't know anything about it, you have no idea if something's a good idea, a good deal or a bad deal. Yeah. And half the time you're buying it from somebody, that's also the case. They're not sure. Right. Um, what I suggest, we're, we're going to play a little game in a sec, but one of my favorite tips is when you're searching Facebook or Craigslist, Try and look for ads where you see a picture of a drum kit that's probably poorly set up and does not look used. It might show a lot of dust. Yeah. But what you're looking at, what you're looking for is a drum kit that is a nuisance. What I mean by that is many people buy drum sets with the greatest of intentions. They're, but they're big and they're loud. And they usually take up valuable space in your house. So because of that, for a long time, they sit there. And you might play it and be really excited about it. But then maybe... You, things things happen in your life. You get busy and you stop playing them. Got a neighbor that that won't let you play. You, uh, sure. Even though you thought you could, you thought, oh, yeah. it's not going to be that this loud. Not, and every time you hit a drum, yeah. the neighbor comes yeah. Yeah. Oh, But yeah. you end up leaving it in your living room or wherever the kid is because you feel shame. Corner of the basement. Yeah. This big thing I just bought is still sitting there. It's like a it's like a it's like a albatross in your living room. Yeah. And then eventually one day you're like, okay, I have to get rid of this. So there's no longer an attachment to it. At that point, you're gonna get the best deal you ever got on a drum set because they're hoping, they're gonna put that ad up and be like, I don't even know what this is worth, yep. just come get it. Yeah. And they're gonna to wanna to connect with you because they're going, oh, this is going to someone who's gonna play it. Yeah. Please, let's make a deal. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to connect with things. The other side of that, one of my most favorites, and probably one of the more difficult ones when you work in retail, because we would take trades all the time, is when someone is so emotionally connected to what they have, they can't let it go for anything realistically mm -hmm. possible. Someone will bring in a drum or a cymbal and say, well, it's, it's made of albatross fur. You have to have this. It's, uh, it's one of one, uh, but I have to have $10,000 for it. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a really nice drum, but if I take the albatross fur out of the equation, it's probably a $500 drum. Yeah. And they go, oh, I'm insulted. I cannot believe yeah. you do not like my albatross fur and blaze and snare drum. And I say, well, yeah. unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make a deal today. And that's okay. Yeah. So that also happens when you're shopping privately is if someone is telling you their life story about the piece of gear and all the connection they have to it, you might have a hard time getting a deal mm -hmm. yeah. because they're probably, they need to sell it or they'll say things like, don't need to sell this. Yeah, I don't need to. Then they probably to don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had any experiences like that? I don't want to say, I, I do not want to say customer from hell, but right. any situations where you had a, a particularly 
difficult conversation to, to make a deal happen or, or unable to? Yeah, I mean, the first one that comes to mind was, uh, it was a custom kit. A customer bought a brand new custom kit directly from um, a generic drum company. They make great drums, but they're not badged. It's just a, just a generic kit. And they probably paid, I'm gonna guess, at least four grand probably sure. for these yeah. drums and brought them in and wanted them, wanted to sell them. And I gave him a number and boy, was he unhappy. And um, truth be told, I just said, brother, the, in the eyes of a lot of people that come in here, they're, they're no name drums. Mm -hmm. So if you're, well, these are worth blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I understand what you paid for them, but we got to try to sell them. And there's, and yeah, he left the store unhappy, basically. Oh, the guy lowballed me, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. It's just like, bro, like, Sometimes you this gotta be is the with deal. Those, right? yeah. yeah, like, you, you gotta know the game, man. Yeah, and you'll notice too if you look in, in those used uh, pages, I don't care where you live in the world, there's always gonna be a couple of kits or snare drums or whatever that are gonna be up there perpetually. Yeah. That are just too expensive. Yeah. And yeah. everybody knows it. But they're banking that eventually they're gonna find someone like them yeah. who's gonna pay six, seven thousand dollars on whatever it is. And that's fine. Yeah. If you own something, you can choose the price. And that's probably the strongest piece of advice I can give you when you're negotiating is that it's not personal. No. When you're having that conversation of what you yeah. want to offer somebody for something, if they get offended by that, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. It's just not the right deal. Yeah. Um, and when you're selling, it's the same thing. Because, if yeah. someone makes you an offer, sure, they might try to, you know, you might want $1,000, they might offer you 100 Well, okay, that's not going to happen. Mm. But open the negotiation, see where it goes from there. Yeah. Okay, well, that's not going to happen. How about 900 Yeah, it sort of brings 200. up the, the uh, old adage of, well, what is it worth? Well, yeah. whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. Yep. Right? Some true. people will live live on that edge of that, you know? Yes. Now there's a balance there, and that's exactly yeah. it. What is something worth? And what is the free market gonna tell us it's worth? Yeah. yeah. If you're working in a situation where you work in a retail shop and you have to sell something, you've got to make margin, you have to stand behind the product, you have to look after it somewhat. Mm -hmm. All those things are important because we want to continue the trust with every person you sell yeah. to. You're not going to sell it and be like, good luck. Yeah. You guys stand behind your products? Yeah, <laughs> way behind, man. <laughs> 30 seconds to 30 feet is your warranty, my yeah, man. Yeah. No. Um, the whole idea with that is, is that, yes, there might be a person at that premium price. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that they live locally. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to find them in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. So the price that I feel that is the maximum we can get comfortably is this price. Mm -hmm. And that's usually somewhat and down or very much down. Knowing what the what that item costs brand new is is huge. Yeah. Because if it's brand new, a thousand bucks, and it's kind of beat up, <laughs> and you're asking nine hundred, right? You're not going to get. Well, same tax, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's having some again. Go to the websites. Go find out how much these things cost. Do your research. And yeah, do some research and say, okay, if this is brand new at this amount, then I should, a used one should be somewhere in this area and let's talk. Yeah, that's right. Um, you'll also find one of my favorite things on that idea too is when you're shopping for something and you're, you're, you're trying to get the best deal you can, but you can't quite find the right product. You'll be like, okay, this is close to what I would like you might be able to negotiate a deal on that. You might get that as, as an interim piece. You might wanna keep looking. That piece you're looking for may eventually come available for sale, mm. but you're buying yourself time by getting something, okay, well, I have this for now, but eventually I'm gonna find that piece that I, I really, really want. And maybe it will come available to you, mm. right? Um, if you know what you're looking for. That's right, yeah. and the education is yeah. a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst places I find to get a good deal on something is an auction. Oh yeah, yeah. I cannot tell you the number of times there'd be an auction on a music store going out of business. Yeah, and guy would buy a lot, and they come in. Oh, I bought this cool drum kit. It just needs some heads and this and that. I go, well, oh, cool, it's a nice kit. Do you mind to ask? And usually they're really happy to tell you what they paid. Right. I got that for two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking out of the corner of my eye on the exact same drum set, <laughs> brand new for less. And yeah, yeah. And I go. Yeah, it's right here, yeah. and they go. Well, I got a little little caught up in the yeah, moment yeah. there, I guess. Yeah, well, it that, happens. That's but. a similar thing again. Is like knowing how much something costs, and so you might be flipping through your used ads, and you'll see something again 
that costs whatever seven hundred brand new, and again the person's asking six fifty, right? And it's like, okay, does this person not know what they're talking about, or mm -hmm. are they nefariously trying to rip somebody off? Like it's, it's very. That's one thing that I just kind of chuckle. It's like, wow, that this person's asking new price for mm -hmm. for their used item. Yeah, I. It's in, so then, of course, you, you can try to lowball them. Chances are they'll tell you to beat it. Yep. And uh, you're like, okay, then. Like, good luck. It's, uh, yeah. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's put this to the test. I've pulled a random sampling of current Craigslist ads out of our local area. Okay. I'm going to bring up the pictures, and we're going to discuss whether or not we think it's a good deal or a bad deal. Mm. Uh, I have some notes on them here, so you're not going totally blind. While we're doing this, everybody, those of you out there on YouTube, those of you in Drumeo, if anybody is currently looking for a good deal on something, and you have your eye on something in maybe your local Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace, share the link. I'm, I think we can try and do this in real time, guys. Cool. All right. So we'll right. give it a shot. If you guys idea. want some right. advice, take advantage of the 60 plus years of retail experience. We'd be happy to try and help someone get a great deal today, right? Totally. Okay, so while we're doing that, let's show a picture. Chris, if you could please bring up the first image here. Okay, so this is a Tama. I think it's a Swing Star kit. I think it's a Swing Star kit. Yeah, yeah. Now, my eagle eyes tell me it's, it's got, got the original mount. symbols, uh, it's got a pair of hi hats. Uh, the snare drum is certainly not original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no. it's kind of neat, might mm -hmm. be cool. Uh, pretty dusty, not well set up, clearly shoved in the corner of the garage. And a, a, a Gibraltar platform mount on the top, not a Tama I think that's mount. a correct Tama mount. It is it? I do believe it is. Yeah. Now, is that it? now, what price do you think that should sell for, guys? What's a good deal on that kit? Depending on what that snare is, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's a factor. Let's but, assume um, it's a decent snare drum, yeah. I think. Not a great drum. That's the thing, like that, that snare drum might be worth the, re the same yeah, the rest of but, the kit. So what do you think is a fair offer for at, that? At a quick glance, I, from what I saw, I don't know, 300 might be. Might I was be, at four. I was yeah. at 400 great. bucks for so the whole So that pile. kit's a yeah. great deal. It's listed right now for 250. Oh, yeah. you can't go wrong. You cannot yeah, even, go wrong. Even, yeah. even not knowing what the snare drum is, I'd take the risk. At 250 bucks, I'd probably take the risk. And sure. like, that it, snare is certainly no worse than the one that normally comes with it. Yes. Uh, it's really dusty. Yep. Mm. I didn't show, there's a couple other pictures of that particular ad, but the heads are warm but playable. Sure. It's got your typical sort of setup, but for 250 I was like, that's a great deal. Yeah. All right, next picture. Da, 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 da. There it is. Oh, I love these pictures. The exploded version of a drum set. <laughs> so we've got- It's a 20 piece. Uh, yes, that's right. That's yes, that's, oh, by the way, let's talk about that yeah, briefly. Like that. When you count drum set pieces, <laughs> you count only the drums. Yes. Just the drums. Yes. This is a five piece drum set. <laughs> so uh, I can see it looks like a Yamaha stage, stage custom, custom kit, probably okay. two generations old, I think. Yeah, it's got a yes mount on the toms. Yep. That's definitely cranberry red. Looks like decent Zildjian cymbals. All the hardware looks to be there, probably. Now we can't see all the picture, but I see the throne in the back there. Yeah, yeah. I bet you there's a pedal. Yeah, pedals there. Yeah, you can tell that kit has probably lived a very nice life in that very uh, clean room that it's in. Pretty good, pretty good thing there. Good old cranberry red. Um, yep. What's a good deal for that drum set, guys? I'm gonna say pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, if it was up at 400 bucks, I know the Zildjians, you could kind of part those Zildjians out for, you know, a couple hundred I don't hundred think bucks they were high-end Zildjians, no, though. No, no, no a couple hundred Zildjian, bucks for a set yeah. of cymbals to yeah. maybe a kid that's looking to upgrade Bass room heads, clearly brand new. Yep. Kits in great shape, yep. very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, listed for 450, I think it's a great deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm a little bit curious that you find that to be like a three or four hundred dollar kit. Just it is. A, it's about twice the value of the first kit we looked at. True. The, the, when I in that photo, the only thing that that I personally quickly looking at that photo, the what the what you're getting are, are the shelves. Yep. Everything yeah. else is hoping for the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next picture, please, Chris. So this is a PDP X7, so Pacific Drums and Percussion X7. They had this really cool mm. deal you could buy. If you want lots of drums, there's lots of drums. Mm -hmm. 8, 10, As you can 12, see, 14, 16, 22, thank you. 14 mm. snare, yeah. Full hardware package, it's a lacquer finish. Uh, I had a couple <laughs> other pictures I could have shown you, but uh, I didn't think that was necessary, because this tells the whole story. Couple Heads are in very good crashes. shape. There's a lot of money and symbols on yes. this drum set. There's a lot of money and yes. symbols on that drum kit. Uh, symbols are certainly outpaced the value of the drum set. Yes. Uh, okay, good deal or bad deal. Actually, I see one symbol on there that's quite rare. That AA Fast Chinese? Uh, it's either Fast Chinese or Sound Control. 
could be a, yeah okay so either way it's you get the little there. flange on the edge or yeah, it could yeah. be a flat edge on it yeah, yeah yeah um what do you think that set's worth guys what do you what do you think i think they're selling it for yeah about 800 bucks Oh, they're probably asking a lot more than that. Okay. I'm going to bet that person is asking two Gs. Okay. Very different response here. Yeah. Where are you getting 800 from? I want to know. The drums themselves don't look like they were played that much. No way. Uh, as of recent. That is a drum set that's been loved. Maybe yeah, I'm that's, not, maybe that's I'm a not drummer that's sure I'm staring into the lights here, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. It's got that. It's got that pride of ownership all over. Oh, okay. absolutely. So the two K guess is really good. That kit's an insanely good deal. Eleven hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a ridiculous that's a really deal. good deal. Yeah. I would I would say to people when I would see deals like that is I'm like you could buy those drums, burn the drums, and still get your money out of yeah, the symbols. Yeah. yeah. I I said that, making an assumption that that person's thinking they're going to try to get all their oh, money back. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Because th th that's a great point. I'm I'm giving this a bit out of context yeah. here. It's, kind of the point but um, yeah that could be I look at that and when they're selling the whole kit and caboodle they're probably getting out of it right because usually you see kits set up that nice yeah they might be upgrading yeah true right but uh, probably not but yeah I think that's again, probably where I was coming from too they're if it was a shells only deal up, upgrade mm. right want to do a full packet yeah. yeah okay next picture oh yes Yamaha DT Express 3 I have one of those brains at home so it looks like it's in awfully good shape Probably very little playing time on it, I would say. Uh, especially for a kit this age, those pads tend to start to get a lighter gray color. Yeah. They start to get harder. As they've been hit a that lot. That one yeah. looks to me like it's virtually brand new, which is shocking because that set's got to be at least 15 years old. Yeah. About, yeah. Yeah. So, now this is an electronic drum set. This is quite old, mm -hmm. but in great shape. Mm -hmm. uh, pros, cons, guys. Yeah. Ah, well, yeah. What's it worth? What do you guys think a good deal on that would be? Tyson? Good deal on new, that. New, those were 1100 bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 1100 bucks new. Like, 350 400 bucks. Okay. I'm thinking two. Yeah, see, I'm on the same page as you. Uh, a kit that's like three generations past, which is at least what that is, because mm -hmm. uh, the DT Express 4 came out after that. The DTX 400 and 500 have been in the market now for almost 10 years. Well, Knowing what you can get new right. now, that's thank that, you. Then that's a very you know that's the so that's that the, kit yeah. is on the market for five fifty. Yeah. I would that's, say that's uh, an average to poor deal. Yeah, it's a great. It, it I will say this based on the condition, it will last you forever. Mm. But it's going to have old sounds, old architecture, not a lot of fun features on. It's mm. hard to navigate compared to today's stuff. It is no. App. What are they ask, asking? Uh, 550. 550. So, and that's the thing too. So, you can assume that they'll, any of the asking price, you know, they'll come down a little. Yeah. So, there's that too. They 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 put that price up thinking, ah, maybe yeah. I'll let it go for four. Yeah. Which is still a little high in my opinion. A little but high, but probably palatable. Yeah. I would say. Especially in the shape it's in. It sure. looks really clean. Yeah. All right, next one. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, this, <laughs> symbol for pictures only, clearly. Uh, <laughs> this is a Alesis Nitro Mesh. Special edition in the, in the beautiful red, yeah, the red, red. color. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so this takes the cake for me in this one, and I won't give it away why yet. Uh, it looks like it's probably in great shape. It couldn't be that old. It's only been on the market a couple of years. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. New and 550? 600 bucks? Six and change, six I believe. And, okay. and that's that's Canadian. Yeah, yeah Canadian, Canadian dollar store. Yeah. 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 It's red. I, I don't. Craig, do you know if there's, I don't think there's anything else beyond the red that makes it a special edition kit. I don't think the module has anything different no. in it. No. All right, so that includes all the stuff you need. It's got a throne as it should. Okay, so uh, what would you pay for that one? What would I pay for what that? Think, what do you think is a good price for that? 200 one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 200 This is the worst deal I could find. Okay. okay. $1,000. They oh want 1000 So they want more, See, almost double what it's yeah. worth new. So again, that just makes me cringe. So either they don't know what they're talking about, or they're trying, or to, they're trying to rip somebody off. Yep. It's it's one or the other. Yeah, that was my favorite. Maybe hey. it's yeah they, they don't don't know what they have. Yeah, they, they didn't purchase it themselves, but so they really it, don't know what it's it worth. It takes but. approximately fifteen seconds to find out what. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the internet, yeah, so true. <laughs> okay, one last one. This one's gonna be tricky. This is the bonus round. Okay. All right, so. Roland TD-17 KVS. This is generation one. That's important only because they've recently upgraded to a version two. Mm -hmm. uh, Eagle-eyed Long and McQuaid staff members will notice the module does have a Long and McQuaid rental sticker on the corner of the module. It does. Uh, that's very subtle, but it's there. Uh, Mapex pedal too, I believe. 
Yes, it yes. does. Anime Best Throne. And Throne, and throne yeah. Very so, nice. Craig, good for you. All right. Um, so, this kit looks like it's in pretty good shape. Don't really care how it's currently set up, but it's, it's you know, it's probably in a good spot there. It looks like that's probably where they were playing it. There's actually a little amp next to it as well. It's like a little guitar amp, but... Uh, is that included? It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the sticks. So this is a tricky one, I thought. This is current uh, electronic drums. The new module has new sounds, a few other features, but pretty much, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. The experience is about the same. Mm -hmm. So that kit new uh, would sell for probably $25, $2,600 Canadian, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more. Uh, by the time you add in the pedals, you got to add a pedal, the throne, mm -hmm. uh, the amp's got some value. It's not a great amp, but it's there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is a fair value for that? Truthfully, 15-ish. Yeah. Yeah, see that's, this one was yeah. tricky for me because I, I looked at it a couple of times, 1400 bucks. Yeah, yeah. That, you can't, that, that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's, you're saving about $1,000. Yeah, that's reasonable for It's sure. not too many generations old. It's, you're going to get the same experience oh, if you yeah. bought a brand new one. You can bang away on that for a long time. Yeah, and that's one thing I will say about electronic drums. The more advances we make in electronic drums, their lifespans are lasting longer and longer. Yeah. And you're getting more value out of them as we go. We talked about like, the Yamahas, that the more you played them, the older Yamahas, the more you played them, the pads got grayer and yep. kind of harder, the rubber got harder. And now with mesh head drums like that, you know, if the mesh heads are getting worn a little bit, you can swap out the mesh heads, even get into some of the electronic replacements that isn't too expensive <laughs> with the There's internet out there. has been some great conversation in both chats. I Has there say. been? Okay. It's, the guys are all playing along. This is wonderful. Some really great guesses and uh, it's fun. Um, looking through here, yeah, yeah, everyone's got their opinions, it's great. Uh, no one sent me a link though to uh, on any gear. Someone says Guitar Center has no soul. <laughs> I don't know that that's fair. I think there's good and bad in every location, wherever you go. Yeah. So you just gotta find the right person. You gotta find some soul Guitar Center. Find, again, it can find, be done. Find, your, find your rep. Your it is guy, a little bit yeah. harder to do. It is a little bit harder to do, I will say that. In the bigger chains, we, we work for the largest chain in Canada, mm -hmm. one of the largest chains mm -hmm. in the world for music. And um, yeah, it's you, you just gotta you gotta find your person. Yeah. And sometimes there it takes time. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. That was fun, guys. Great. It was actually. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, you can see like I spent like ten minutes looking for those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do something different now. So every week we like to, we have a guest out, we do something called Blast Beats, which is <laughs> you have to answer 20 questions in 60 seconds. Okay. If you do, someone on YouTube's gonna win a prize. Today I'm gonna give away a set of Drumeo's eardrums, our in-ear monitors, yes. which I'm not wearing today, but they're a triple driver. They're worth about 150 bucks US. They're awesome. I use them every day. Dennis Chambers likes them. Uh, lots of folks like them. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so no pressure. Now we have something special for today. Uh, this is kind of an inside joke, but I want to share it with you. So the countdown timer has a little bit of bed music underneath it. But Chris, also used to work along with Quaid, thought this would be hilarious. Chris, can you just uh, bring up the clock for us? Let's hear that music quickly. <laughs> We're going back. So that's the whole music. That's the whole music for Live with Quaid. Yeah. One of a couple of the loops that we yeah. had for sure. So. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. So uh, keep in mind that's going to be rolling underneath this. I personally uh, prefer. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do this thing. I'm going to count you down. You're going to answer 20 questions in 60 seconds. We've also modified this. I'm calling this the industry version. Okay. So it's not just the same questions that we give everybody. You got a couple of special ones. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. <laughs> Nylon or wood chip sticks? Wood. Is the customer always right? Sure. Heel up or heel down? Both. Where do you buy your gear? Uh, Logan McQuaid. Coated or clear drum heads? Coated. Most famous drummer you sold something to? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, Jojo Mayer. Symbols, clean or dirty? Dirty. Golf or tennis? Golf. Pedals, chain, strap, or direct drive? Strap. Yeah. TV or movies? Movies. How many snare drums are too many? I'm gonna I, pers I'm gonna say one, but that's oh, just me. Okay. I, I'm I'm weird like that. White wine or red wine? Beer. Single or double pedal? Single. Flying or driving? 
driving. Are concert toms still cool? Absolutely. Suit or t-shirt? T-shirt. Lacquered or wrapped drums? Wrap. Steak or seafood? Seafood, baby. LP or streaming? LP. Piece of gear you don't own but really want? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> so much. Too much to mention. Pick one. Uh, oh, my God. I would say, uh, I'm going to have to say a Maypax Design Lab. Oh, very nice. Okay. Uh, I got to give it to you because I got that question at the end there. And so we'll give you the time to answer that question. All so right. congratulations to someone on YouTube. Yay. You're about to win a set of the Dremio eardrums. I'm going to give that to... Oh, I'm going to go with Aaron Whitdrum. Congratulations, Aaron Whitdrum. You have won a set of Drumio's eardrums. All you got to do is email me at krad at drumio.com with your address. We'll get the sent out to you right away. Congratulations. All right. That's I just, fun. I don't want to say thank you for not having me play Blast Beats. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. Blast Beats. Yeah. 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 Oh, the name is know. a bit of a misnomer. Yeah, it's all good. I get it. I get it. I have to be honest. That's the first Blast Beats I've actually seen. <laughs> there you go. I work here and I set up for drum department oh, every okay. day, but I'm usually, you know, on my way home out by the out. time we start yeah. filming. And uh, nice. that was, I, I love that. I'll have to put you to the test. I'll, I would days. love to be put under the test one time. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's time to share our groove of the week. So every week we like to feature a drummer who's doing something really, really awesome. And we usually find them through the internet, um, be it Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever they are out there in the drumming world online, primarily, because that's where we're looking. Uh, this drummer I want to showcase today, his name is Yo. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get this wrong. I apologize. Yong Ki Lee. Yo mm. Yong Kui Lee. Pardon me. Yong Kui Lee. Say it with me, everybody. Yong Kui Lee. There, there it is. It is. Uh, this is going to be our Groove of the Week. Young Kui Lee. Check them out uh, on Instagram. It's uh, their, their handle is Y-E-O-N-G-K-W-I underscore L-E-E. -E. Young Kui Lee. Check out this amazing drummer. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the clip in there. That's totally my fault. Yeah. That's funny. That's real funny. I got all the way into that. I got your back, young Kui. That's all good. great. Oh my goodness. That is so funny. <laughs> all good. My apologies, young Kui Lee. What I'm going to do is while we're working here, I'm going to do the next thing. I'm going to find that clip. I'm going to send it to you right now. And then we're going to do that. All right. This is live, everybody. It's live. Sure I, is. All that build up for all nothing. Build up. We'll come back to that. Wah, uh, all right. Wah, wah. I've been this there. one. This one I have. <laughs> uh, I want to congratulate our Dromeo student of the week. If you're just hanging out here on YouTube and you have no idea what else we do around here, we do all kinds of cool stuff. We have uh, lessons and all kinds of videos and courses, and we can even help you play your drums with like some personal helping lessons and things like that. We do a thing called student focus, but. We also love to showcase and lift up our students who do awesome things all the time. This week's student of the week is Savage Kitty Hawk. Uh, Savage <laughs> is a multi-instrumentalist who has loved music her entire life. She played piano and cello at a young age and eventually moved to the guitar. Hmm, guitar. Mm. Won't hold it against them. But her journey did continue on to drums in May 2022, shortly after Taylor Hawkins passed. Uh, ever since then, though, she's been obsessed with the drums. Yay. Good. Congratulations. Craig, would you mind uh, coming on over to the drum set here? Okay. We're going to talk all about the a &F cocktail kit, baskets, and bass drum pedal clamp holder. Kind of a weird name, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Craig, it's right there on the floor. This device, this handy little device, is really, really cool. It helps you turn your floor tom and snare drum into a cocktail drum set. Very just like cool. that. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get right in there, Jesus, there we go, yeah. So it's basically, it, I love a &F products because they're first designed aesthetically to look kind of vintage, but they tend to function very modern. So what we basically have here is something as simple as a double-sided snare basket. It's one basket goes on the floor tom, and then one basket goes on the snare drum. Craig's got all the adjustments there. Yeah, I think this I figured cool. it out. Now, oh, I see. there is also a bass drum pedal connector or is that is super have it simple. backwards? Uh, no, you got it right. No, yeah. I think he's got that's, the basket backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that sorry, yes. goes on. See, that's the fun of this. This yeah, is a live right. demo. There we go. <laughs> Let's get those on Oh, there, there she goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loosen that off. There so that that's, goes. of course, nickel plated like all of the other products. Just so cool. cool with the A&F hardware, the oh, nickel plating on it. Kind of brassy, 
looking silver rather yeah. than shiny, shiny chrome. Absolutely. And you may yeah. ask yourself, self, why do I want to play a cocktail drum set? Well, sometimes you need to play in a very tight in space, and you don't want to buy mm. yet another small drum kit. There's a million little drum kits out there. Go this way. This is great. Cool. Yeah, I've never done this before. I've seen the product. Very You've cool. always wanted to know. I'm going to move this mic while you do that. All right. We're going to capture the old two-in-one here with this mic. Chris is going to love you for that. Okay, I think, <laughs> I think that is on. Oh, look at that. She's okay, a beaut, Clark. Let's do that. Let's go there. And what we've got on the floor here, we actually have a Tama uh, Speed Cobra pedal that we've literally flipped the cam around on. It was, it was fun So it and swings awesome. backwards. Yeah. And our... Drumeo quiet kick beater actually fits perfectly in there. It does. Craig, while you're at it, can you pass me that bar that you're about to put in the helmet? Thank you. Oh! Hey. Oh! That's okay. This bar, if you want to go to the, there you go. This bar also attaches to your floor drum, but the bracket just flew across the room. We're not using it today because this particular drum kit is unusual in that it has giant floor tom legs. This clamp fits 90% of the floor tom legs on the market. This is in that 10% that it doesn't, but you don't even actually need this bar, but it will actually connect to one of the floor tom legs and your pedal, keep the pedal in place. I think I'm that. doing it all right here. Yeah, I think you got it. One more yeah. adjustment of the bar. Yeah, oh, there. That one. Yeah, yeah. There so you can go. adjust that snare however you like it. I'll just do cool. our stuff. Here. here we go. So now you can set that snare up however you want. Yeah. Cool. cool. Place the beat. Super cool. Very neat. I love how you can just take any snare drum, any floor tom, and do that with it. Would you do me a favor? Can you grab me that pedal that you're stepping on right now? It's going to show folks how we did this. It does not come with this beater. This is our Drumio beater Aha. from the Quiet Kick. But yeah, we were actually able to flip this whole thing around. A lot of pedals you can actually do this with these days. Uh, Tyson said it took him 15 minutes, but if you do it again, it would take five. Yeah, if I had to do it again, it'd take me five. But Tama, because you can actually undo the ends of the vertical posts, you can take the axle out and flip the whole thing oh. around and drop it into place. And then also their, their drum key holder and their spring tension assembly at the bottom, you can undo those and switch them to the opposite sides. Just a single, oh. single Allen wrench on the inside. Funk, now I push down and the beater goes up. Isn't that crazy? It's, yeah. See, it works backwards. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boing, 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 but, uh, boing. But yes. Yeah, and that's the Drumio Quiet Kick beater we used in that. You could use a regular beater to travel farther. A little I farther. I just wanted to make it a little bit shorter distance. But yeah, that with this bar, this clamp's on like this. And with that clamp that flew across the room, clamp that to your floor, floor tom leg, and off yeah. you go. Super cool. Uh, and as you can see, it was very easy for Craig to set up with no instructions. Took a couple of tries, but whatever. Uh -huh. That's what we do. And he, and he sat on the drum throne, but you could like stand stand up and play it. Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, cocktail, yeah. So, is it cheap? Not really, it's 285 US dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's extremely well made, looks super cool, and that's much less expensive than going out and buying yourself a little pocket drum kit or a thing like sure. that. And you can use your favorite snare this way. And this will, Fit up to like a, an 18 inch drum. 18 inch, yeah. And you can put all kinds of different snare drums in there. So, And of course, you don't have to have it angled that much. If you were standing, you'd have it flat. Yeah, exactly. Totally, right? You might even have a little bit of room to play the floor tom if you wanted to, I suppose. Super cool. We're going to oh, give that away that, in a minute. We're going perhaps, to give that away yeah. to someone out there in the members area. We're also going to give away a, a one year's membership to someone out there in YouTube still. So stay tuned. That's coming in a minute. But first, let's talk about the groove of the week. Here we go. So, groove of the week. The drummer, you guys all remember the name of the drummer, right? Yong Kui Lee. It's Lee. Yong Kui Lee. Lee. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yes. We are celebrating Yong Kui Lee this week, everybody. Fantastic drummer. What I also want to mention, because I didn't mention it earlier, is if you out there have a drummer that you've seen that needs to get the light spotlight shone on them, email us. Let us know who it is. Email me, e email me at krad at drumeo.com. Anybody that you think is worthy of Groove of the Week, and we'll share it. Because there's so many fantastic drummers out there doing all kinds of great stuff, and we just wanna know more about it and make that part of our community. Before I show the video, speaking of our community, if you wanna be part of our community, come and check out Drumia. We have a seven day free trial. All you have to do is go right there. Drumio slash trial. Well, dot com slash trial. Bam. And you get seven free days. You can come hang out with us. You can learn 5,000 songs. 
I don't think you can do 5,000 songs in seven days. You can get a lot done in a week, but maybe not that much. Yeah, but you know, give it a shot. And if you like it, come hang out for longer. That's possible too. All right, let's check out Groove of the Week. This is Yong Kui Lee, everybody. Kui Lee, awesome yeah. stuff. Love the notation, killer right foot. Yeah. Mm. And st- perhaps the most relaxed drummer I've ever seen in my life. He is playing so yeah. smooth there. It's, yeah. it's nothing, yeah. nothing happening. So great. It's shoulder posture. <sighs> Guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. We're gonna give away a couple of prizes and then cool. that's it. We're gonna stick around a little bit longer for the members. We're gonna answer any questions you guys have about gear, Craig's gonna come cool. stay and hang out here a little bit. Cool, cool. But thank you so much, Craig, for coming out today. Thanks for having me, Kyle. This has been great. Tyson, thanks for, uh, as always, being voice of reason. I try to be. <laughs> Get right. out there and buy some drums. Get yeah, out there and buy some more drums. Absolutely. But get you know what? You want to find, them... find good deals on drums? Go to your local drum shop. Yep. Constantly. Be there regularly. Yep. See all the used stuff that comes in. First and foremost, play drums. Play drums. You there got you sticks go. in Everybody. your hand, you're a friend of mine. Yeah, <laughs> There you go. We found uh, that Craig, yesterday. I need a number between one and seven. Five. Five. There we go. Okay. War Ghost Squad, you have won a one-year membership to Drumeo. Congratulations. Yay. All you need to do to redeem that is email me at krad at drumeo.com. We'll get you set up with a one-year membership. Congratulations. All right. We're also going to give away this super cool uh, cocktail mount, this as well, and the clamp that flew across the room. Mm-hmm. Keep that tight. Yeah, keep that tight. You know what? That's the funny thing is, is it doesn't go tighter than that unless it's on unless the leg. Unless it's attached. Ah, yeah. So what happened the leg there? Is the maybe post- see that's why we do these reviews. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. You may have to. You may have to keep an eye yes. on that thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's do a number between one and twelve. For me. Sure. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Joel Marquez, congratulations in the members area. You have just won this beautiful cocktail mounting setup from a Drums. Thanks to a for making that available to us. I will remind you all, beautiful. whenever we do a gear review, we do not pay for these things, but we also uh, don't get paid, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So yeah. these are unvarnished reviews. We, they just send us stuff, cool. we review it, and then we give it away. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's pretty simple. And now we'll give away Dave's drum kit. No, we're not mm-hmm. gonna do that. I gave you an Apex see. Mars Maple. You sure did. Before. And thank you for that. And Someone I watched out there, that episode, That obviously. drum kit ended up in Florida. Very cool. And they had just started playing the drums. They were over the moon. Couldn't believe yeah. it. Nice. So nice. it went to someone who loves, loves, loves them. Very cool. And that's what it's all about, everybody. All right. That's it for this week's drum department. Next week, we're going to have Eloy Casagrande here. Mm. And we're going to be doing some really cool stuff with double bass, adding double bass to songs that don't normally have it. So mm. check us out then. Uh, until then, pla- <laughs> practice your English, Kyle. For the rest of you, practice your drums, and we'll see you again soon. In the members area, we're going to come right back. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>